Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games. Here we have Aaron on an Oath list versus the Atog Lord himself on a new build of Enchantress, which I am very excited to see here on camera. Portent starting out for Aaron, digging. He's going to want an Oath. On it fast. Basic Forest. Basics. Very much played in pre-modern. As a matter of fact, I have a whole box of pre-modern era basics set aside as people like to use the lands from that era. Days actually stopping fireworks already. Gothian Enchantress. Best things you could possibly be dazing there, especially not needing to return the island, just hard cast days. Looking good. Aaron has used Gush and is now using even more card drawing, digging, trying to find the right tool for the job here because Enchantress will eventually overwhelm you if left unchecked. You cannot let it hang around all day. Wild growth added to Sarah's Sanctum. Enchantress has stuck. Now a dangerous situation. However, Aaron does have an enchantment of his own. Oath of Druids. There is a enchantress on board. He's going to let him mill. We'll see what his choice of creature is. It is mostly Phantom Neshoba. For a lot of different ways you could potentially build Oath. Spirit of the Night and... Chroma. Probably the final... Oath targets around that era. Shortly after, you'd see some, you know, kind of elegant cards like, at least for vintage uh, cards, like uh, the Hydra from Nemesis. As fading, let me know in the comments. That one did see a little bit of play. This is a utility creature. Oath it up, and then you'd be able to repeatedly recur it. A Cognifor was a big creature that you could run a whole lot of instants and sorceries and get a massive creature out of. Let me know what your favorite thing to get with Oath is in this format. Back in the day, I actually used Oath to get Terravore. First attempt at a tournament deck. It actually did quite well. One of the things about magic is you actually don't have to be good to win as long as you're better than the people you're playing. Something I can say is pretty strong about this store in our community is we have a very, very competent player base that is exceedingly friendly and welcoming. However, this is not a very friendly line. Words of Wind is just going to be absolutely disgusting in this situation. So to get a look at the, the board, we've got Fertile Ground and Wild Growths on Sarah's Sanctum, and that's going to allow for Cloud of Fairies to be picked up. Cloud of Fairies recasting be able to untap a whole bunch of mana here. Not a good situation. Aaron's pretty well locked out here. Anytime... Rich plays an enchantment. He's going to be able to skip the draw. Keep Aaron pinned down. However, he's got words of war as well, which will start to accumulate massive amount of damage. As you get more enchantment or enchantress effects, that actually gets completely out of hand, allowing you to bounce enchantments along with the Cloud of Fairies, replay them both, basically going infinite, are bounded by the number of 
cards in your deck in terms of getting those draws. Are you even bounded? Not really, right? Because you can bounce an enchantment and the cloud of fairies. Replay them as long as you're getting more mana out of the two lands that you're untapping than it's costing you. Pay to replace the draws. So, yeah, it's it's a nice little bit of deck building here. Yet again, showing there is plenty of room to innovate in this card pool. It is far from solved. Of course, as these innovations come out, they can become part of the metagame and the, the larger shifting of the tides, trying to figure out what you actually want to be playing. Say this particular build of Enchantress distinct enough to be different than those main lines that we see. Oh, and Carpet of Flowers. Now that's a card that I actually don't recall seeing a ton of playback in the day. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. I feel like this card is way more popular now, like in Legacy, than it was in the early 2000s. Certainly wasn't worth money back then. Cards that if I had a hundred of them, I'd probably sell through them all. Full demand. Got Rebecca Gay Art on it. Aaron's mana base, as we saw from game one, is a whole lot of islands. Antress's presence. That's going to see even a null. How portent. This carpet of flowers feels really egregious. I mean, I feel like Aaron needs some like fetch lands, non islands to be able to continue developing his mana base. He's just going to fall way too far behind. Can't continue to expand. His resources. Another carpet of flowers. That one gets dazed. But kind of a losing battle, anyways. Antris doesn't necessarily care about any given enchantment once it gets rolling. Counterspell stopping it, but. It's a cash trigger, so you're trading one for one, and Enchantress is just drawing these cards. Eventually get buried. Argothian as well. This one does come with a little bit of risk of potentially allowing Oath of Druids to become relevant. A Rich's board, I mean, could just pop off here. No question. Aaron could tap out for an Oath and never get another turn. Instead, just adding a second land feels bad. Like, it just really feels bad playing islands just directly into your opponent's carpet of flowers, but really not much else you can do. We got two draws here. This is, this is bad. Fertile ground. Another two draws. Aaron has had enough. This is just going to start chipping away at his meager board presence. He's got some show and tells and some oaths needed. Whatever his oath target was. Yeah, Rich's deck. We didn't quite get to see it totally pop off in this second game, but it was it was getting very bad. <laughs> 